So that's it, the final part of the knit along. This time we'll use the Russian grafting technique to make the shoulder seams, then we'll cross the stitches to prevent holes at the sides of the neckline, finish the neckline and hide the tails. At the end of this tutorial we'll discuss a simple way to improve the look of the project. Well, it's a densely packed tutorial, so we'd better get started. Now that the tee is almost finished, you probably want to put it on, but you can't do it yet because the front and the back are still not joined and we're going to fix it right now when we make shoulder seams. So align the work so that the front and the back are um, laying flat and then move the stitches on one side of the work, doesn't matter which side you start with. Uh, move the stitches closer to the tips of the needles and now you understand why it is so handy to keep uh, one group of stitches on one circular needle and the other group of stitches on the other circular needle because right now it is very easy for us to start seaming without transferring stitches from scrap yarn or to scrap yarn or whatnot and now we don't have to worry about that at all. So the stitches are close to the tips of the needles and we are ready to seam. We won't use a wool needle but we'll use a crochet hook to help us join these stitches and remember we uh, cut short tails because I mentioned that we're not going to use any yarn for seaming. We're going to use a Russian grafting technique which is a very nice way to um, join stitches without uh, seaming actually. Uh, why I like this way for shoulder seams because it is not too stretchy it gives some kind of definition to the seam it looks nice it is visible but it looks nice and I like it uh, to use it for shoulder seams because it's not stretchy it keeps the seam from really kind of stretching out and almost falling apart so how does it work insert the crochet hook from left to right into the first stitch uh, of the first group of stitches, the one that is at the front of the work, the one that is closer to us. And then slip it from the needle, like this. Then do the same to the first stitch of the other group of stitches. Again, left to right, go into that stitch and slip it off the needle. And now twist the hook, see, and then move a one stitch through the other like this now insert the hook into the first stitch on the front group of stitches again and slip it off the needle then again twist the head of the hook a bit to pass one stitch uh, through the other then do the same to the stitch from the other group of stitches pass it through the other and keep going one stitch here, join them, one stitch there, and then join those two stitches again. So join these stitches stitch by stitch, taking one stitch from one group and then one stitch from the other group. Now when you have one stitch left before the marker, remember why we put the marker in to show us where the uh, shoulder seam ends and the neckline begins, right? So uh, when you have one stitch left before the marker, we're gonna cross the stitch with the stitch that is on the crochet hook. And crossing would happen in this, the same way as we did right here when we cross stitches to prevent the hole in the underarm. Right, and uh, the reason for this crossing of stitches is basically the same because if we don't cross stitches, if we keep them as they are, then we would have a little hole right here and at this side of the neckline and at this side of the neckline. It's not really a big deal. Uh, we can easily fix that hole by just stitching it up, you know, with a piece of yarn. But if we can prevent that hole, then why not, right? And to do that, uh, here's what we do. We cross these stitches. So 
slip the stitch from the crochet hook to the needle that holds stitches of the front and that will be the needle that has the marker on it see this needle doesn't have any markers and this one does that means that they, these are the stitches of the front of the top so now we slip that stitch from the hook to the needle and I put the hook aside for now and then I take the needle from uh, this side because I need the tip of the needle to uh, cross these stitches. Then insert the tip of the needle purlwise into the second stitch and pass this stitch over the other one. And don't drop the stitch. Same way as we did over here, don't drop the stitches. Keep them crossed on the needle. And now slip these stitches to the needle that holds stitches off the back. This is this needle, the one that doesn't have any stitch markers in there. So we slip both stitches, but keep them crossed. Remember to keep them crossed and remove the marker. This would be our goodbye to this marker. We won't need it again in this project. And now I just pull the cord to move the stitches uh, to, uh, to join, you know, the other stitches of this group. And when we work the neckline, because these stitches will be worked in the neckline, then we have to remember to keep them crossed. We have to remember to work them so that they are crossed like this. Uh, because that was the whole point of this operation, crossing the stitches, right? Okay, now this shoulder seam is done. It looks pretty nice. Like I said, it is not invisible. You can clearly see where the seam is, but it looks nice and it is stretchy, but not too stretchy. And that's what I like about it. And that's what I feel is good for shoulder seams. Now we um, move to the other side of the work. You can turn the work or uh, just move to the other side without turning the work. Just do it the way that you feel comfortable and uh, do the same thing. We simply slide the stitches to the uh, tips of the needle, closer to the tips of the needles. And then these first stitches would be uh, looser because we have tails here, right? And when we pull the stitch, it will most likely become looser. So don't be scared, that's, that's okay. We will fix it by simply pulling the tails uh, before we weave in those tails uh, later on. So, and now we take the crochet hook again and we do the same thing. Go into this stitch, slip it off, into the, that stitch, slip it off, and see that's when they become really big. So I pass one through the other and then I will pull the tails to kind of tame those stitches because I don't like them to be big. And then we go stitch by stitch, joining them using the Russian grafting technique. And again, when we have one stitch left before the marker, this time it's going to be at the group of stitches that are uh, at the back. Uh, when we have one stitch left, we stop and we're going to cross this stitch, the one that's sitting on the crochet hook, with that last stitch again. And we do it uh, the same way, but now it's going to be the other way around because the stitches are um, at the other side of the work. So we place the stitch uh, from the crochet hook, we place it on the needle, like this. And now we remove the crochet hook forever <laughs> for this project. And now we move the, stitch, uh, the needles. You can pull it out if you wish, like I did uh, the previous time, or you can simply just move them like this. And then to cross these stitches, insert the tip of the needle into the second stitch, the one that is next to the marker and then pass it over but don't drop any of these stitches okay just keep them on the needles and then move that uh, the other stitch to the stitches of the back uh, and we know that the needle that doesn't have stitch markers that's the needle that we are looking for that's the needle that holds stitches of the back and we remember to keep these stitches crossed later on when we knit them now we remove the marker and that would be it. We finished the seams. Uh, we uh, joined all stitches at each side of the work. And now we will work on finishing the neckline. So the seams look pretty nice over here. 
and we ha still have those open stitches of the neckline and we're going to do it in the next step. And again, we will be glad that we have these stitches already on the needles because we'll finish the neckline working with two circular needles. You can do it uh, using the classic way when one needle is assigned to one group of stitches and the other needle is assigned to the other group of stitches. Or you can do it using the alternative way, the way that I used when I worked uh, the body of the T. So uh, neckline is worked in the round obviously and it is uh, worked with the contrasting color of the yarn so we go back to this contrasting color white color for me the same color that we used to make the narrow stripes start at one of the shoulders doesn't really matter which one and then start working in the round knitting every stitch in this round through the back loop there is no need to join the yarn, so we'll do it the uh, same way as we uh, did when we um, joined uh, the yarn earlier. Uh, we simply fold the yarn, leaving a small tail, and then when you are knitting the first stitch, you place that fold or wrap the yarn somehow around the needle and pull the wrap through. And remember that we are working, we are knitting each stitch through the back loop. I'm going to leave the tail and now I use the working yarn to knit every stitch through the back loop. As we are working stitches of the neckline of the um, front, uh, we'll come across those wrapped stitches, the stitches right here, where is it? These stitches that come with wraps, those double stitches, and we will treat them as one stitch and knit them through the back loop together the or both strands the stitch plus the wrap will knit them through the back loop together just like this see i came to my first wrap stitch and i insert the tip of the right needle from right to left into both strands like this and then i knit these two strands as if it was one stitch i knit them through the back loop and here's the next one and I do the same thing. I simply knit both strands through the back loop. When we get to working the stitches of the back, remember that the first two stitches and the last two stitches of this group should be crossed. And mine, as you see, they fell apart. So I'm gonna fix that and cross them again, just like this, just on the needle without taking them off. And uh, that's important that uh, we do that to prevent that hole um, at this uh, spot from happening. So remember to uh, cross those stitches before you knit them separately through the back loop, just like this. But even if you don't remember, if you, you know, miss this spot, nothing major is gonna happen. Even if you end up with that little hole, at the side of the neckline then you can easily fix it by stitching with a piece of yarn just as you would sew a hole in a sock for example so it's not uh, something that's complicated or you know unusual but if we can prevent it then like i said why not why not do it right so i simply work to the end of this and see these ones they uncrossed as well because i've been reshuffling uh, stitches on the needles but that's not a big deal I will cross them again not really a complicated task at all okay here are these two unruly stitches that don't want to stay crossed so I'm gonna cross them again just like I did the previous time without even taking them off the needle just cross them like this use your fingers <laughs> nothing wrong with that and then I'm going to knit them separately through the back loop. Okay, so we finished this one round and now all we have to do with this neckline is to bind off stitches. And we will bind off stitches as knits, just regular knits. Simply knit two stitches. And this first stitch will be loose because we attached the yarn here, so I'm going to pull the the tail a bit to make it smaller and then knit the next stitch and then pass 
one stitch over the other just the regular way as we bind off stitches all the time when we finish a project so bind off all stitches as knits and here's my last stitch okay all stitches are closed and as you see the bind off edge um, outlines the neckline see it goes right around the neckline uh, it makes the neckline uh, look well finished but it also has a little um, thing that we have to remember the uh, the way how we bind off stitches how tight the bind off is determines the size of the neckline so if the bind off bound the uh, bind off edge is tight if you were tight when you were binding off stitches then the neckline will be smaller if it is uh, you were loose when you bound off stitches then the neckline will be wider uh, so before you cut the yarn see i made this stitch really big so that i i know i don't lose it before you cut the yarn put the top on if it's for yourself of course if if it's for somebody else and you can't try it on then just hopefully <laughs> the bind off edge was um was not too tight or too loose right but if it is for yourself then before you cut the yarn try it on and see whether you like how wide the neckline is if it is too wide then undo these stitches pick them up again and bind off uh, all stitches again but uh, this time do it tighter if the neckline is too tight then do the same thing but uh, may I bind them off again and make it a bit looser so that's a little variation that can't be it's all very personal because we are all have our own tension and um, the only thing to know whether you like the um, uh, the way the, the the edge turned out to be uh, is to try the top on so um, this top is not for me, <laughs> so I'm not going to try it on. I'm going to cut the yarn, leaving a small tail, and uh, pass this tail through the last stitch. The first thing that we need to do is to, uh, to close this gap because this one doesn't look nice at all right so we see this gap between the first and the last stitches and uh, here's how we do it uh, take a wool needle thread the tail into that wool needle with the right side of the work facing to you insert the wool needle from front to back under two legs of the uh, first stitch that you bound off like this yeah I can't catch the the second leg where is it right here okay so you go under two legs and then pull the yarn through so that the um, the the strand this one the strand that now joins the last and the first stitches uh, is about the same length as any of the stitches in the bind off edge so we are kind of making it look like the bind, bind off edge is not um, interrupted and then we insert the needle from front to back under one under the back leg of the last bound off stitch like this and again we make sure that this new stitch that we've just created is about the same as the rest of the stitches now carefully turn the work to the wrong side of the work and then secure the yarn by making a loop and going into the loop and now that we have this uh, tail in the wool needle already it makes sense to move to the next step of the pattern and hide the ends so we simply hide every end uh, into the work and we weave it in in the uh, fabric that is in the same color so if we hide the tails that are in the contrasting color then we'll try to do it in the segment that is done in the contrasting color so i usually go uh, three or four stitches in one way it's good if your needle is uh, thin the wool needle is thin and you can split the yarn it's even better so i usually go one way and then again two three four stitches uh, the other way and i usually try to split the yarn as much as i can because that ensures that the tail will stay there forever 
Then we trim the yarn, leaving a tiny tail, and then discard the yarn. And do it to every tail that you have in the work. Uh, and uh, when you get to uh, weaving in tails that appear here, where the stripes are, then you can uh, either undo the knots over here if you feel if you don't like the knots in your work so simply undo it and then make it nice and weave it in I usually keep the knots in but what I do I, I would uh, pull the other tail uh, to make sure that uh, on the right side of the work the stitches are more or less even and then I carefully weave it in so actually I'm gonna do it right now just weave in this tail. If you notice any other imperfections like loose stitches that we had when we attached the yarn or uh, accidental holes or something else then now is a good time to fix all those imperfections and no one will ever know about them. And this is my last tail so three more uh, steps to hide it, pull it through and trim the tail. Okay, no more tails. Good, I can turn it inside out. Uh, if you decided to uh, make the sleeves longer right here, then you would need to uh, stitch that section of the extra stitches. You would need to just seam it. Use either whip stitch that goes, you know, around the fabric or use the um, baseball stitch. You can find that tutorial at tenrosaday.com slash baseball dash stitch. When everything is seamed and all tails are hidden, uh, there is one more thing that we can do to improve the look of the top. We can block it. I don't know whether you, you can tell from the, the camera, uh, but right now the fabric is not really even. If you look at the stitches, they are kind of like a bit of a different sizes and a bit of a kind of rough, you know, not really laying flat. Uh, they are a bit of kind of bumpy. Uh, and uh, blocking helps improve the look of the fabric and helps it make really really nice and well finished. So how do we block the, um, uh, the top? It is fairly easy because cotton yarn is, uh, is strong and nice and it, uh, you shouldn't be afraid to burn it or fry it, you know, or do some damage to it because it can tolerate heat, it can tolerate uh, water, so it's, uh, it's a nice versatile uh, fiber and uh, the easiest way to block it would be to steam it. If you have um, a steamer then it's great, if not then use a regular iron and a steam button. So press that button and steam uh, the fabric nicely on one side of the work and then on the other side of the work until the fabric, until you can feel that the fabric becomes a bit moist. And then once that happens, uh, pull the fabric sideways first like this all the way you know every bit of the top just pull it sideways like this and then pull it again but in the other direction along the direction of knitting like this and then lay it flat and uh, to make sure the top is uh, not distorted that the sizing is as uh, as it should be then uh, refer to the project at a glance section in the pattern to measure the length of the top and the width of the top and kind of arrange the fabric, you know, move it a bit so that the top is um, the same measurement as it should be for the size that you are making. And once you are happy with the sizing and the look of the top, then simply leave it there to dry completely on a towel, on a flat surface. And when it's dry, put it on and wear it with joy. I hope you enjoyed making this summer top with me. If you missed any part of this knit along, you can find them all in the Everyday Tea Knit Along playlist. I will uh, post the link down below. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you in the next tutorial.